tell me the funniest joke you have ever heard. Dave was bragging to his boss one day. You know, I know everyone there is to know. Just name someone, anyone, and I know them. Tired of his boasting, his boss called his bluff. Okay, Dave, how about Tom Cruise? No problem, boss, Tom, and I are old friends, and I can prove it. So Dave and his boss fly out to Hollywood and knock on Tom Cruise's door, and Tom Cruise shouts, Dave, what's happening? Great to see you. Come on in for a beer. Although impressed, Dave's boss is still skeptical. After they leave Cruise's house, he tells Dave that he thinks in knowing Cruise was just lucky. No, no, just name anyone else, Dave says. President Obama, his boss quickly retorts. Yup, Dave says, old buddies, let's fly out to Washington, and off they go. At the White House, Obama spots Dave on the tour and motions him and his boss over, saying, Dave, what a surprise, I was just on my way to a meeting, but you and your friend come on in and let's have a beer first and catch up. Well, the boss is very shaken by now, but still not totally convinced. After they leave the White House grounds he expresses his doubts to Dave, who again implores him to name anyone else. Pope Francis, his boss replies, Sure, says Dave. I've known the Pope for years. So off they fly to Rome. Dave and his boss are assembled with the masses at the Vatican St. Peter's Square when Dave says, this will never work. I can't catch the Pope's eye among all these people. Tell you what, I know all the guards so let me just go upstairs and I'll come out on the balcony with the Pope. He disappears into the crowd headed towards the Vatican. Sure enough, half an hour later Dave emerges with the Pope on the balcony. But by the time Dave returns, he finds that his boss has had a heart attack and is surrounded by paramedics. Making his way to his boss's side, Dave asks him, what happened? His boss looks up and says, it was the final straw, you and the Pope came out onto the balcony and the man next to me said, who the F is that on the balcony with Dave? There were two hunters in the forest on a very hot day, and suddenly one of them collapsed. His friends started to panic, and dialed 911 to ask for help. They picked up and asked what seems to be the emergency. He replied, my friend's collapsed and he's not breathing, I think he's dead. The operator replied, well before we do anything else, you need to make sure he's dead. The operator heard a gunshot from the other side of the phone, and the hunter said now what? One day a guy was driving down the road, and he came to a farmhouse. The man went up and knocked on the door. The farmer answered and said, howdy. Can I help you? The man replied, yes sir. I noticed you have some honeysuckle in your backyard farmer said, yes son I do. The man asked, do you mind if I get a couple pails of honey? The farmer just laughed and said you can't get honey from honeysuckle. Let me try, said the man. Two hours later the man came walking up with two pails of honey. The farmer asked, how'd you do that? Ah, uh, it's a secret, exclaimed the man. Two weeks later, another knock on the door. The farmer answered and said, howdy, can I help you? The man replied, Yes, sir. I noticed you have some milkweed in your backyard. Farmer said, Yes, son, I do. The man asked, Do you mind if I get a couple pails of milk? The farmer just laughed and said, You can't get milk from milkweed. Let me try, said the man. Two hours later, the man came walking up with two pails of milk. The farmer asked, How'd you do that? Ah, uh, it's a secret, exclaimed the man. Two weeks later, same guy comes knocking on the door. Farmer answered and said you again, what now? The man stated, I notice you got some pussy willow in your backyard. Farmer said, hold on. I'm getting my hat and coming with you. Two men are working on a shipping boat headed to Ireland. They are both quality control managers and are instructed to check on the product before leaving. They go below deck and open one of the boxes, and inside are hundreds of potatoes. One of them picks one up and notices that it's a very odd shape for a potato. He picks up another and is also perplexed by its peculiarity. He picks up a third and realizes that they are all shaped like penises. He says to his friend, I don't think we can work on this ship with all these penis potatoes. So they go up to the captain's quarters to quit. When they arrive they say, Captain, we can't work on this ship. We would like to get off. He looks them in the eye and says, I'm sorry gentlemen. This isn't a democracy. It's a dictatorship. This is by far one of my favorites. I tell it at every opportunity. Once in a kingdom far, far away, a king was craving some music. He looks to his subjects and selects one, instructing her to assemble an orchestra and conduct a performance. Excitedly, the girl begins her composition. For days she slaved away over her piece, and once finished, she marveled at some of her best work.
On opening night, however, the band screeched and lobbed out of rhythm and tune. Stop, yelled the king. This is the worst music I have ever heard in my life. I sentence you to immediate death. The king followed as the girl is ushered into a dark room where she is given a final meal of her own request, spicy curry. Once the meal is placed upon the table the musician scarfs down the meal, drenched in sweat and heat. As the bowl reaches empty, an executioner moves the girl onto an electric chair, straps her in, and flips the switch, sending thousands of volts through the machine. As the smoke fades, the king looks upon his subject, who is still alive and well. In his surprise and marvel, the king offers the girl another chance to impress him. Fearing her execution, the girl pours herself into a new piece, bringing all of her musical and emotional expertise to the table. After a month, the work is complete. However, her performance once again fails to impress the king, and she is sent back to the execution chamber. Another round of spicy curry is ordered. Having requested the spiciest peppers and spices, the girl sweats and gasps for cool air as she eats. Once finished, she is strapped back into the chair and struck with thunderous lightning. She collapses for only a moment, then raises her head up to look at the king. One more try, my lord, she says, eyes glimmering with determination. Begrudgingly the king accepts. He gives the girl two weeks to put out even just a haphazard performance. As expected, the performance was terrible, just as the last had been. Screeching violins and ill-beating drums resounded from the orchestra. Enraged, the king ordered the girl be executed, and this time, no spicy curry. The girl is strapped into the chair by the king himself. Eager to see her dead, he slams down the lever and holds it, only letting up when he could feel the heat on his face. Through choking coughs and smoldering ashes, he looks to the chair. Surely, she had to be dead. Then, a quiet voice. One more try, my lord. The king jumps. Witch. How are you still living through these executions? You eat no curry. Smiling, the girl looks up. It was never the curry, my lord. I am simply a bad conductor. Cheers. Smiley face. For nuns die and go to heaven, they stand in front of St. Peter, he beckons for the first nun to come up, she does, he asks her have you ever touched a penis? She blushes and says only with the tip of my finger. He says okay, dip in the holy water and she can go in, next one comes up, same question, she responds my whole hand. He says okay same dip in the bowl next to him and he sends her in. He beckons for the third nun to come up when the fourth nun starts screaming and getting angry, he explains this is heaven and she needs to calm down, what is the problem he asks. She says if you think I'm gonna garble that water after she sits in it, you're out of your damn mind. This is a really dark joke that I thought was hilarious when I was a kid. A brand new dad realizes that in all the excitement, they forgot to buy a bassinet for their baby. So, while his wife is still resting at the hospital, he sneaks off to a store that has used and new baby furniture. Everything is really expensive, except this beautiful, old bassinet sitting in the corner, selling for an outrageously low price. He asks the owner about it, and the owner says that the person who brought it and said it had a terrible curse on it. That within two minutes of putting the baby in the crib, it would die. Then, two minutes after that, the mother would die. And then two minutes after that, the father would die. Well, the father wasn't superstitious at all, so he bought the crib, put it in the baby's room in the house, and then got back to the hospital to take everyone home. The wife was delighted by the crib, and the husband didn't tell her the story behind it. Within two minutes of putting the baby in the crib, though, it died. The husband and wife are freaking out and calling 911 and then within two minutes of this chaos, the mom collapses dead next to the crib. The husband is freaking out now, and goes into a blind panic. He runs from room to room, he can hear the ambulance pull up outside, and he runs straight out the front door and trips over the UPS guy's dead body. A moth goes into a podiatrist's office, and the podiatrist's office says, What seems to be the problem, moth? The moth says, what's the problem? Where do I begin man? I go to work for Gregory Alinovich, and all day long I work. Honestly doc, I don't even know what I'm doing anymore. I don't even know if Gregory Alinovich knows. He only knows that he has power over me, and that seems to bring him happiness. But I don't know, I wake up in a malaise, and I walk here and there, at night I, I sometimes wake up and I turn to some old lady in my bed, that's on my arm. A lady that I once loved, doc. I don't know where to turn to. My youngest, Alexandria, she fell in the, in the cold of last year. The cold took her down, as it did many of us. And my other boy, and this is the hardest pill to swallow, Doc. My other boy, Grigaro Ivanilidovich. I no longer love him. As much as it pains me to say, when I look in his eyes, all I see is the same cowardice that I, that I catch when I take a glimpse of my own face in the mirror. 
If only I wasn't such a coward, then perhaps, perhaps I could bring myself to reach over to that cocked and loaded gun that lays on the bedside behind me and end this hellish facade once and for all. Doc, sometimes I feel like a spider, even though I'm a moth, just barely hanging onto my web with an everlasting fire underneath me. I'm not feeling good. And so the doctor says moth, man, you're troubled. But you should be seen a psychiatrist. Why on earth did you come here? And the moth says, cause the light was on. Not the best heard, but nothing else in my mind ATM. Mark is climbing the stairs behind his wife when he comments, your ass is as big as a washing machine. She's not saying anything. Later in the night, he was in the mood for sex and then his wife said, for such a small cloth I'm not going to start the washing machine. You can wash it by hand. Three men die and go to hell. The devil, feeling particularly himself, decided to grant each of them one wish. The first one said I wish I were alive again so I could have a second chance at redemption, so the devil obliged. The second man said I wish I were alive again so I could live a lavish life, which the devil also grants. The third man says I wish my friends were back. One more. A guy walks into a bar and sees a banner saying do three things when a million bucks. He sits down and asks the bartender of the banner is a gimmick and something to do with deers. Bartender says nope, real money. Okay guys says what are the three things then? Bartender points towards the end of the bar at a guy who makes the rock look small. You gotta knock him out one hit. Second, I got a 12 foot gator out back, got a bad tooth, keep her awake and alive and pull the tooth. Finally, got a 89 year old woman upstairs, she's been looking for someone to please her, you gotta make her happy three times in a row. That's it, do it and get paid. Guy looks at the bartender and says okay, let's open a tab first. He starts throwing shots down back to back. He gets well past his limit, gets up wobbles towards the large man pow down in one hit. He proceeds out back, for 20 minutes all the bartender can hear is screaming and pleading, guy comes back in, shirt tore halfway off, bloody scratches and gouges all over him, he looks at the bartender and says, alright man where's the old lady with a bad tooth? A frog goes into a bank and approaches the teller. He can see from her nameplate that the teller's name is Patricia Wack. So he says, Ms. Wack, I'd like to get a loan to buy a boat and go on a long vacation. Patty looks at the frog in disbelief and asks how much he wants to borrow. The frog says $30,000. The teller asks his name and the frog says that his name is Kermit Jagger, his dad is Mick Jagger, and that it's okay, he knows the bank manager. Patty explains that $30,000 is a substantial amount of money and that he will need to secure some collateral against the loan. She asks if he has anything he can use as collateral. The frog says, sure. I have this, and produces a tiny pink porcelain elephant, about half an inch tall, bright pink, and perfectly formed. Very confused, Patty explains that she'll have to consult with the manager and disappears into a back office. She finds the manager and says there's a frog called Kermit Jagger out there who claims to know you and wants to borrow $30,000. He wants to use this as collateral. She holds up the tiny pink elephant. I mean, what the heck is this? The bank manager looks back at her and says, It's a knick-knack, Patty Whack. Give the fraud alone. His old man's a rolling stone. A sheriff walks into a bar in the Old West. The pianola stops playing, everyone hushes and turns to look at the sheriff. I'm looking for man, fellas, and I need your help, says the sheriff. The bartender, cleaning a glass with a tea towel asks what's he look like sheriff. Well, he wears a brown paper hat, has brown paper boots, wears brown paper pants and rides a brown paper horse. The patrons of the bar digest this information, and then one of them shouts out what's he wanted for Sheriff. Sheriff rustling. Bit of a local one, might not get as many laughs, but you never know. I was driving home through Snowdonia the other day and saw an Eskimo parked on the side of the road, bonnet up and steam coming out of the engine. I pull over to offer him assistance. I told him, ah, uh, I see you've blown a seal mate. He looks at me and immediately says you cheeky Welsh bastard. Well at least I don't fuck sheep like you lot do. You've probably heard the old story of Cinderella, but have you heard the story of old Cinderella? Turns out that happily ever after stuff was a load of crap, her man died, their kids grow up to be spoiled brats, running the kingdom into the ground while she's grown old with not much to do anymore but sit in her rocking chair petting her cat. But then one day, totally out of the blue, her fairy godmother appeared again. Holy s, said old Cinderella, where the hell have you been? What was with all the happily ever after talk? Everything sucks now. The fairy godmother said, I know, and that's why I came back. To grant you another three wishes so you could make things right and believe in fairies again. Gotta be quick though, because there's a lot going on in the fairy world, and ain't nobody got time for this stuff. Old Cinderella says, okay, um, 
I wish I was young and healthy and beautiful again, and boom. It was done. Okay, next, um. Okay, I wish for my house to be traded for the palace, so I can make things right in the kingdom from here, but can I keep the rocking chair and have it turned into a gold rocking throne? Boom. Don, formerly old, twice young Cinderella giggles and says imagine the look on my kids' faces right now suddenly finding themselves in that little house they gave me. Anyway, for the third wish. I want you to turn my cat into the most handsome prince the world has ever seen. Boom. Done. And the fairy godmother disappeared but Cinderella hardly noticed as she was already lost in the eyes of the most handsome man she had ever seen. And then he leaned in close and whispered in her ear, I bet me how you wish you hadn't cut off my balls, huh? For Jews are arguing, it's very common to argue about their religion. Three of them against one. So the one guy say well, God. If I am right, send me a sign. The wind blow, the clouds cover the sun. Nah, that doesn't count. Could be a coincidence say the three others. So the one guy goes again God, if I am right, send me a clearer sign. The clouds slowly let the light pass through them and a ray of light is cast on the one guy. Nah. Still don't believe it. So the one guy goes again. God if I dash. Suddenly, a loud voice resonates from the sky. He. Is. Right. So what, say the three Jews, that's still two against three. A very rude man walked into a bank and went to the teller. Man, I'd like to cash this mother f check. Teller, sir, I can't tolerate language like that. Man, what's the f problem? I'm just trying to cash this g check. Teller, let me speak with the manager. The teller goes off and speaks with the manager. The manager comes to the man and says, Manager, is there a problem here, sir? Man, yes. I just won the lottery and I'm trying to cash this mother f $10 million check. And that woman won't help me. Manager, oh, you mean that be over there? Same cannibals, three new guys. We're gonna skin you alive, eat you, and then use you our skin to make a canoe. But to show you are not complete savages, you get one wish each. The first guy says, I want to go for a walk alone in the woods. They reluctantly agree, he disappears and is gone. Second fella says his wish is to go for a swim alone, again they agree and he swims to freedom. Third guy comes up, they inform him he can't go for a walk or a swim, so, his wish us, he would like a dinner fork. They give him a fork, and ask what he wants it for, stabbing himself quickly in the chest he shouts, you'll make no effing canoe out of me. Works best if you do the stabbing motions yourself, without the fork obviously winking face. During the French Revolution, the commoners were busy executing the elite and bourgeoisie by beheading them. They dragged a lawyer up on the guillotine, but as the blade dropped toward his neck, it inexplicably stopped. That was taken as a sign from God to spare his life and he was freed. Then they brought a wealthy merchant up for execution, but again the blade stopped just short and he, too, was freed. An engineer was then dragged up to the guillotine and laid in position. He looked up at the huge blade suspended above him and said, Oh I see the problem. A man and his pet duck wanted to go see a movie. The man walks up to the ticket window and tries to buy a ticket. The teller sees his duck and says no pets allowed. He tried to convince her his duck was well behaved, but she said sorry sir the rules are the rules. No pets. Well the man started thinking. He shoved the duck down the front of his pants and went back to the window. Seeing no duck this time the teller sold him a ticket. He bought a snack and sat down in the theater across from two old ladies. It started getting really hot and uncomfortable so the man unzipped his fly so the duck could breathe. One of the old ladies nudged her friend gasping in horror. Ethel that man has his pants unzipped. Well Marge if you've seen one you've seen them all. Yes Ethel but this one quacked and is eating popcorn. A son's fifth birthday is coming around the corner. The father asks the son, what do you want for your birthday, my boy? The son looks up at his father, and in the most adorable voice, he says, pink ping pong balls. The father, puzzled, thinks to himself, why on earth would he want those? But his father's due, he went to the sporting goods store and bought his son a slip of pink ping pong balls. He hands them to his son. As his son's face explodes with joy, the scoundrel runs upstairs but his father doesn't see him for the rest of the day. The father walks into his son's room, and there is not a single pink ping pong ball to be seen. He checks everywhere, and not a single sign of those spherical choking hazards can be found. His son is fine, and no damage seems to have been procured. The father shrugs it off and goes to bed. Eleven years go by, and the son is now sixteen. He's officially a teenager and excited about all the possibilities the world has in store for him. His father asks him, son, it's your birthday. What could I give you to ease your transition into the adult world? 
The son ponders for a moment, then looks at his father dead in the eyes and says, A box of pink ping pong balls. The father is puzzled again, thinking his son must want a car or something more extravagant. Are you sure? He asks. Yes. So the father buys his son a box of pink ping pong balls. He hands them to his son, and the same look of wonder and amusement graces his face from when he was a child. The son runs off to his room, and the father doesn't see his son for three days. He checks in on his boy, and to his amazement, there is not a single sign of any pink ping pong balls. The father, not one to judge his son's motives, shrugs it off. Seven years go by, and the son is getting ready to go to college. The father asks his son, if there were any gift in the world you would want that would always remind you of this point in your life, what would it be? The son doesn't even blink and says, a bathtub full of pink ping pong balls. The father raises an eyebrow, obviously this has to be a joke. Are you sure? He asks. Definitely. So he buys his son a bathtub full of pink ping pong balls. He doesn't see his son for two weeks. When he hears from his son, he's relieved. So he heads over to his son's dorm and doesn't find a single trace of any pink ping pong balls. His suspicions finally aroused, yet never one to judge his son, he shrugs it off. Seven years go by, and the son is getting ready to go to college. The father asks his son, if there were any gift in the world you would want that would always remind you of this point in your life, what would it be? The son doesn't even blink and says, a bathtub full of pink ping pong balls. The father raises an eyebrow, obviously this has to be a joke. Are you sure? He asks. Definitely. So he buys his son a bathtub full of pink ping pong balls. He doesn't see his son for two weeks. When he hears from his son, he's relieved. So he heads over to his son's dorm and doesn't find a single trace of any pink ping pong balls. His suspicions finally aroused, yet never one to judge his son, he shrugs it off. Ten years go by, and the son has become a doctor. The father, filled with pride, asks his son, if you could have any gift in the world to celebrate this monumental occasion, what would it be? A shipping container filled with pink ping pong balls, the son replies. What? The father grimaces. I want an entire shipping container filled with pink ping pong balls. So the father buys his son an entire shipping container filled with pink ping pong balls. He doesn't see his son for two months. When he hears from his son, he rushes over to the docks to check the shipping container. It's empty. Not a single pink ping pong ball. He shrugs it off. Six months go by. The son has become deathly ill. Laying on his deathbed, the son holds the hand of his father. The father has tears running down his face. Son, is there anything I can get you to ease the pain? He trembles. Father. I want. I wanna. Please get me a pirate ship full of pink ping pong balls. Are you kidding me? The father grits his teeth. Please. So the father buys his son a pirate ship full of pink ping pong balls. The doctors hook the son up to all of his treatments, and everything seems fine. They send the son on the ship, and no one sees the son for six months. When he finally resurfaces, his illness has spread rapidly, and he is only moments away from death. The father looks on the ship. Not a single pink ping pong ball. They rush the son back to the hospital, and the father leans into his son. Son. I'm sorry. I'm sorry you're in pain. But I, I have to ask, where do the pink ping pong balls go? The son breathes in deep, stares at his father, opens his mouth, and dies. What about you? Tell us your story in comment section, and don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Right now.